Welcome to Cimientos 2021. Cimientos is a play development program that has given hundreds of playwrights the foundation to explore their vanguardia through developmental workshop panels and stage readings. For our 21st season and due to current worldwide cons health concerns, we're hosting these readings over the Zoom platform with live streaming on Facebook. My name is Guillermo Severiche, and Yati Theater's literary manager, and I'm co-hosting today's reading with Winston Steves. Hi, Winston, how are you? Hey, Guillermo, I am super excited. And today I'm gonna to be joining you doing a little bit of chatting on Facebook and Zoom. So please make sure to send us some love. And you may also ask questions that we will share at the end with the cast, director, and the playwright. Thank you, Winston. Yeah, everyone there on Facebook, uh, welcome and thank you for being with us and we'll still be there with you too. Uh, today's play is When It Hurts, This Body Is Just a House, written by Patty Kim Hamilton, who's joining us from Berlin in Germany. Hi, Patty, how are you? Hi, I'm doing well. It's really beautiful here. The summer has arrived. Perfect. How do you feel about today's reading? Uh, I'm always excited for a reading, a little bit nervous, but I think it'll be, it'll be really nice to watch and see someone else's interpretation of the play. Perfect. Well, we're very, very happy to, happy to have you with us today. So thank you, Paddy. Thank you. The director of today's reading is Ignacio Garcia Bustelo, and today's actors are Alenka Krager and Megan Ermilio. They all will be joining us for our Q&A at the end of the reading. Before we begin, let me remind everyone that you can post a comment with your questions on Facebook at any time during the reading. If you are on Zoom, you can use the Q&A option. Your questions and comments are more than welcome. Finally, Yeti Theater is an unknown profit organization and every actor is being compensated for their work tonight. If you want to support our theater, please visit www.yatitheater.org slash donate. We can't stress enough how much your contributions of any amount help us maintain these programs, but also will be tremendous support during these times of uncertainty. So without further ado, welcome to Cimientos 2021. When it hurts, this body is just a house by Patty Kim Hamilton. 27, two children under a tree. You look good. <sighs> you look, your hair is long. I look like shit, I know. It's a new aesthetic. I like to call it bipolar two, mid-diagnosis, hot off the cover of Vogue. It's all the rage, a lot harder to achieve than it looks. I like it long. Don't shower for at least four days, spend a few days not sleeping at all, then sleep mm -hmm. eight hours a day for a week. Don't wash your face, so you make sure you break out and um, don't do laundry, that's too exhausting. Just wear whatever you wore yesterday. And the day before. And the day before. Um. I like your shirt. Green suits you. I, I found it in a box on the street. I find most of my clothes in boxes on the street. Yeah, something I learned from you. The other day I was walking and I saw this uh, shirt in a box on the street and uh, right above it on the ground floor, the window was open. And so I looked in, I, I mean, it's an open window, like it's begging you to look in. So I looked in the window and, and some guy, he's just lying horizontal on the couch with a giant glass of red wine dangling in his right hand, watching, um, I think it was Gossip Girl, and I thought of you. I'm sorry. Don't be. 
there's nothing you can do about it. Recovery is a journey, a long journey. Yeah, that's what I meant. That's why. Whatever. Is the medication working? Chu holds out their hand. They're clearly shaking. It's definitely doing something. <laughs> That's good. You're steadily better. I am. Really. Sorry, I I I I didn't mean to come out so negative. I, I just felt sort of like a fall there for a second. I'm better now. Tell me something good. Well, I learned how to play checkers. Oh, I won. Of course. You always win at board games. You were awkward tonight. Well, there's a full moon. Um, you know how I get a little amped. Um, it was just that. I mean, on the way back, when I asked if we could go on a walk, I thought it was. I, I didn't understand. Probably my fault. When you walked into the bar, I was in the middle of a sentence. You read about that in books or see it on TV or, but it really felt like something. Like there was a heartbeat and it went flat just for a second, like inhaling nitrous oxide, loss of brain contact, just for a second. <laughs> Couldn't continue the thought. Couldn't remember what I had started saying. I think she noticed the person that I was talking to. Sorry, I had that effect. That wasn't the point. Yeah. Kay reaches for Shoelace's hand, timid and awkward. Perhaps they have been very far from each other with their bodies. For a moment, Shoelace's body tightens and releases. Like someone poured warm water over them, like maybe for a moment. Kay moves closer. She leans a bit into Shoelace. Not too much, just familiar. Would have been so nice if it had worked. Kay says nothing but nods. They sit there looking up and always the sounds of the tree quiet. Lights change. Six. Kay and Shoelace wearing tutus. Kay is standing on a branch above the swing. Shoelace is rolling themselves a cigarette. What are you most afraid of? Why do you always ask me questions like that? Fine, don't answer. Everyone's scared of the same three boring things anyway. I wanna talk about books. I like books about scientists, like people who like math, people who are weird and nobody got. I feel confused a lot of the time. I can relate. I like biographies. It's like a roadmap for my potential life. Let's trade. <laughs> Do I confuse you? Constantly. <laughs> You're very beautiful. Please don't say that. Sorry. Nobody has to get you. They'll like you anyways. I think I'm starting to get you. I don't like comments about my body. Sorry. I'll stop. Could swing here all night. <laughs> you know what's amazing? I don't hate you. Thanks. No, like, 
I feel like the more I get to know someone, the less I like them. Don't you? Normally. I mean, I just become more and more aware that they can never be what I imagined. Disappointed expectations. A bunch of disappointed expectations. People, I mean. It's life. It's depressing. Life's depressing. But you know what I mean. In a moment, it's just, I hate everything. All of a sudden, really, everything. Like how they floss their teeth when you're trying to tell them about your day. Or how, actually, yes, they actually know the names of every director and cameraman from those cult indie hybrid movies. And why can't you remember? I mean, they told you. Or, or... This one really pisses me off, how they always ask for the receipt at a grocery store, even though they're just going to throw it out anyways. But instead of the nearest trash can or recycling, they just stuff it in some pocket to fall out on your apartment floor, and then you have to clean it up. I don't feel that way about you. Are you thinking about someone specific? Very specific. Nobody's perfect. I made it up. It was an example. I think most people get better the more you know them. Don't you know that theory? What theory? <laughs> um, the theory that if you're stranded on a desert island with someone, you'll eventually fall in love with them. Being in love and liking someone have nothing to do with each other. Well, maybe you're right. Most people are trash. Do you think we'll ever hate each other? You're doing it again. The questions. But do you? <laughs> How am I supposed to know? I want you to tell me what you honestly think. I think you want me to lie to you. Maybe. You're not like other people. You won't be like that. Isn't that what everyone says? I don't think so. Let's trade. <laughs> Let's be friends when this ends. Why do you always assume it'll end? Well, if you could fuck any celebrity, who would it be? Dead or alive. Dead or alive? Dead or alive. As I said. Michael Jackson. I see. Lights change. 16. Shoelace is sitting down on the ground, looking very out of it, disassociated. Kay is dancing to some music we can't hear. She looks over her, sh her shoulder and sees Shoelace. Everything okay? Shoelace smiles, not really present, and nods. Shoe, hello? Shoe, hey, hey, you okay? Uh, yes, yes, <laughs> sorry. I'm here. You seem really out of it. Oh, I feel tired. Um... Do you wanna go to bed? I've been dancing for hours, I could go to bed. Mm. Hello? Are you okay? I feel like um, I sort of want to... It's really... Um, there... <sighs> what did you take? I... Um, I don't remember. Okay, it's okay. We can go home. Oh. It's okay. Okay, okay. What? 
I just said I'd leave with you. No worries. I'm tired too. Okay. Let me just write the others. She gets up and begins to carve something into the tree with a small knife. Um, sorry. Huh? Yeah. Sorry, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm 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 getting paranoid, but could I could I sorry? I, I didn't really um know what's happening. I'm a little confused. Um what are you writing? Uh just that we're going home and we're tired. We'll see them tomorrow. Just don't want them to be worried. Oh, okay. Could I read what you wrote? What? Sorry, it's just, I have to read it. I have to know what you said. It, it's not that I don't trust you. I'm, I'm sorry, I just have to. Shu, I don't. I told you what I wrote. I told them I was feeling tired and so were you and we're going home. That's it. But uh, can, can I just? Can, no. Can... Okay. Um. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Sorry if that was weird. It's okay, Shu. It's okay. Also, I'm sorry, but um, where are we going? What? I can't remember. I feel like, <laughs> can you tell me where we're going? It's okay. We are going home, Shoelace, to the tree. You said you weren't feeling well, so we left the party. I'm gonna help you get to sleep. And then we're going to sleep for a long time. Rest. Okay. Can I hold your hand? Sure. I'm sorry. Please stop apologizing. Sorry, I mean, uh... it's okay. Twelve. Kay comes and gives Shoelace a hug, wrapping her legs around them. Isn't it crazy? What? Isn't it crazy? Kay holds Shoelace's face and looks right into her eyes, as if trying to get inside of their head. What? There's something inside you? What the fuck are you talking about? Me. You. There's an ocean inside of me. Are you really in there? Yep. Last time I checked. Mm, doesn't that seem... I don't know. Vast? Vast. Vast, yes. There's a vast... A whole... You're a whole person inside just inside those thinking totally different, original. And I'll never know. I'll never know what you're actually thinking or feeling or if we're really feeling. Maybe. Sure. I guess, yeah. I know what you mean. An ocean. An ocean. an ocean, a soul. They look at each other for a long time. Lights change. 24. Kay appears as if out of the fog. She stands on one side of the tree. She does not look at Shoelace. Shoelace does not look at her. They speak, not looking at one another. Is there anyone else? No, I could, but I don't really have an interest. Drive, you know? Yeah. Are you, is there, is there anyone for you? Um, well, yes, but it doesn't change. I'm still not, I'm still not over it. I still, does it hurt you if I say that? I don't have to talk about it anymore. Sorry I asked. No, it's okay. You can't really hurt me anymore. No. That already happened. The rest is irrelevant. Oh. <laughs> I should go. 
I just wanted to make sure you were. I'm okay. It's good to talk. Yeah. Okay. Well. Lights change. 26. Again in a fog. Lights up on shoelace in the tree. I think I've realized I like relationships. Being in relationships. Didn't think so before. Wasn't my thing. I miss the smell. The finger in between my ribs. Her asking me how I feel in the morning. On a scale of one to 10, telling her about the dreams. Lights up on Kay, far from the tree. Maybe her face is hidden. This should overlap. I miss them telling me the dreams in the morning. When I lived in the tree, I never dreamed, not once. The day I left, I walked. I walked through a field, I walked over a mountain, I came to a beach and I laid down in the sand, heard the water lapping the coast. Her hair, she's got weird hair. It sticks up like right here. The fact that her favorite food is salami. <laughs> When she's angry, she listens to Brian Eno. Her toenails, <laughs> they're always too long. And the way she puts her finger up to her tongue when she's trying to remember. And I dreamed, I dreamed so vividly of zebras dancing in the water. I was on a giant pink inflatable flamingo drinking a margarita. I don't even like tequila. Quesadillas instead of alarms, clocks. <laughs> Hands running down my spine. Sweat. Soft skin. Tongues. Spit. I felt like I had taken a lot of Xanax. Xanax and tequila, like swimming in my mind. I read through our letters, their drawings, the photos, gifts. The collections of things left behind, little scraps of paper, evidence of something existing. I didn't realize you could miss the taste of someone's mouth. I wore the old gray t-shirt. I should have thrown it away. When you look through it all, you realize you learned a lot from them. I didn't realize how flexible it all is, could be. No, is. But I would love someone so strange, so alien. They really are so alien. Or maybe the world is just alien to them. They weren't anything and I wasn't either with them. Our bodies were just houses and whatever I expected had to be undone. I wasn't a girl or a boy. I was me or both or neither and so were they. And it's so simple, but it determines so much when you love shifting paradigms all the time until it's normal. In my dream or reality on the beach, I felt this lonely pull toward that, something shattered, rough, endless. Tequila, the missing them. Xanax, to forget. More, more. <laughs> I might've been crying. <laughs> it's a bit blurry looking back. Wobbly legs, t-shirts to my knees. Am I dreaming or just remembering the moment it ended? How do you know if you were in love or just loved someone? Do you think I'm doing this all wrong? She was always asking, do you think I'll do it okay? But life, do you think I'll do it okay? was. I'm talking about her like she's dead. I'm sure she's still asking. Right now. Somewhere. Maybe someone's answering. Probably. Someone always wanted to answer. Wanted. It sort of feels that way. Like somebody died. Kind of. Bye. I want to write her, but 
I know it'll only make it harder. I want to write them, but every time I do, I feel guilty. Am I bad? Am I selfish? What about when I see them? I don't think I want to see them. I don't miss being high, confused and high, not knowing if they were on vacation. I don't want to go back. I'll get stuck in the tree. I'll touch the worn bark and remember, and I won't be able to. I miss saying good night and good morning. Those three minutes before falling asleep. When do you stop looking back? Light shift. Four. That was nice. Really nice. What's up? What's up? Don't just stop it. Stop being weird. I'm not being weird. I'm just in being weird. What? Just worried. I don't know. Everything is great. This was great. Right? I thought it was great. Stop it. I swear. Like, actually, I'm literally. <laughs> what if you're falling in love with me? I'm worried. You'll... <laughs> Stop. Oh. Why don't you take me seriously? Are you kidding? Are you kidding me? I'm not gonna... Sorry. No offense. I just don't... I can't with you. No. <clears throat> Wait. That sounds wrong. I mean... With anyone, I can't fall in love with anyone. Okay. Right now. Bandwidth, I don't have any emotional bandwidth. You know, I'm having a hard time just getting out of bed in the morning. <laughs> Most days I'm too cloudy to even function getting out of bed. It's just, how could I? Okay. Shoelace rolls a cigarette and begins to smoke. Kay reaches for the cigarette, pulls a drag, and gives it back. What if you're falling in love with me? 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 <laughs> I was just saying. <laughs> Lights shift. You're home. Hi. Hey. How was it? I'm glad I went. Got out, left for a second. You're in a weird mood. Head space. I'm fine. You hungry? No. Did you eat while you were out? Oh, I don't remember. What did you eat today? I'm fine. You don't seem... Stop. What? Just stop, please. I'm sorry? I just need some... <clears throat> I just need some space, okay? Jeez, I don't have any space. I can't breathe. I feel like the branches are pushing into my lungs. The leaves are too close. There's no room. There's no room. It's too small, the space. There's just no... <clears throat> you know what I mean? We live in a hole in a tree. In a hole in a tree? A hole. A hole in a fucking tree. I thought you liked the tree. Our tree. That's not the point. I don't quite see the point, to be honest. Whatever. Do you want me to? No! Kay somehow hides herself within the tree, and if possible, something slams. Lights change. Fourteen A. Do you have half an hour today? Yeah. An uninterrupted half an hour. Why? 
Do you or do you not? Uh, not really. Not really or not at all? What is this about? What do you need a half hour to do? I have something. I have a surprise. Uh-huh. So you have time or what? Not today. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, maybe tomorrow? Maybe. 14B. So do you have half an hour today? Is this about your surprise? Do you? I don't believe it's going to take half an hour. Okay, so an hour? Do you have a free hour? If I don't have half an hour, why would I have an hour? Honestly, I'm kind of surprised. You don't like secrets. You hate secrets. Oh? Do you want, do you, don't you want to know what it is? I mean, yes, I'm just, I'm really busy. I have to do that thing and see that person. I told you. Okay, okay. You're busy. Yes. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe Saturday. Okay, Saturday. <laughs> 14C. So. Yeah? So do you have a half an hour? Why? For that thing that I planned. Shoo, can't you see I'm in the middle of something? Okay, okay, I, I just wanted to ask. <laughs> 14D. What's this for, this box? Stop, don't look inside. Why do you have a velvet box under your- No way! Is this a surprise? And don't look. Oh, so the surprise is a present. No. Then what is it? Do you have half an hour? I have to finish this thing and then go to that meeting. Then no. Leave the box. Fine. Whatever. 7. I slept with someone else. Oh. It didn't mean anything. It's okay if it did. Don't you want to know more? Not really. I like where we're at. Friends. Friends who fuck. That's not it at all. Okay. Sure. Eleven A. Early morning. Kay and Shoelace are lying in the tree, draped over the branches. When I grow up, I want to be a firefighter. Seems out of character. When I grow up, I want to be someone who buys rolls and rolls of bubble wrap and then sits in a public bathroom stall and pops all the bubbles until they call the police. People don't get paid to do that. Wishes don't have to make sense when you're a kid. So you're a kid? Aren't you? When I grow up, I want to be a girl or a boy. And a boy. And a girl. Girl, boy. Boy, girl. Boy, boy. Boy, girl. Girl. Are you confused? <laughs> Are you not? Twenty-five. Shoelace and Kay stand on opposite sides of the tree, long cords from their phones stringing from the tree to their bodies. Shoelace is sitting on the ground, painting her nails, painting their nails. Kay is pacing. Isn't it the middle of the night where you are? I was walking home. Didn't want to walk alone. It's sort of icy, so I have to take your little steps so I don't fall. Don't fall. I'm taking necessary precautions. <laughs> so how have you been? Huh? How has it been? Oh, um, it's okay. Been better. But 
also worse. I see. And you? I'm pretty good. Just cold. It's cold over here. I bet. I think I'm going to come to visit soon. You said. In a few weeks. Right. I have some things I have to. Right. But I mean, I'll be there and I guess we'll. I mean, I'd like to. I'm around. Not doing much, really. Are you s still. What? Self medicating? I don't have to answer that. Sorry. Of course not. So what do you do with your days? Try to get out of bed. Try to live my life. No. The usual. I want to learn a new language. What language? I'm not sure. Maybe Mandarin or Spanish. Useful languages. Oh, okay. Mandarin is more useful, statistically. I'd like to see you. Me too. I've missed you. Yeah. Um, same. But this doesn't mean, I mean, I think we should be careful just because uh, I don't want there to be the wrong idea. I mean, I like talking on the phone, but. What's the problem? I just want to be clear that I don't see us that way anymore. And I don't want, I mean, I don't think it's a good idea to, um, to. Why not? What? I don't understand. Why not? Because we broke up. So? What? Who cares? Um, I don't think it's a good idea for us. But <laughs> there isn't an us anymore, I thought. Unless. No, no us, as in us, us separately, each of us as individuals. It's just a bad idea. But why? I don't know, it just is. Who's telling you this? Your friends? No, I mean, I don't know. It's not that I don't want to, I just don't think. I think we should talk about this in person. There's no point in making a decision like this before you're even, you know, here. No, but that's the whole point. I mean, I need, we should decide before we're in the same place. And then. And then. Um, okay, well, I think I have to go. You, you made it home? No. You're calling? Yeah, all good. Bye. I gotta go. Bye. Kay hangs up. She stands by the tree, looking up into the branches. Shoelace stares into the phone. 22. Can't you feel? Can't you see that? Can't you feel that? Can't you see that you're always going to react like this? Can't you see that you're hurting? You're being so, uh... Why aren't you? Why aren't you listening? Listening. You, uh... We you... said... We said no friends. Calm down. You calm down. Eleven B. When I grow up, I want to have a mustache and a closet full of Jimmy Choo's. Well, that's how you know when you've grown up. <laughs> when I grow up, I want to have a red fur coat and I want to get a lot of Botox in my face. And then I'll have to shave my jawbone and my forehead and I'll eat as much cake for breakfast as I want every day.
until I throw up. When I grow up, I want to become an exercise fanatic, like mount, mountain biking every morning, <laughs> 5 a.m. Exercise, my drug. I'll stop. Really. I'll blast Enya in the mornings and get a bikini wax because why not? It helps with the chafing from the mountain biking, I hear. <laughs> When I grow up, I want to wear a hot pink tracksuit and drive around on a moped in whatever town I live in and like wave at everyone and everyone waves back. And I'm never lonely and only sad once in a while when I need a good cry like a normal person. And otherwise, everything, everything's perfect. And I live right by the water and it's always common. Shut up. Shut up. You've grown up. Yes. Oh, maybe. I don't know anymore. Oh, uh, I want to go on vacation. Want to go on vacation? Sure. Where? Two lace jumps up, pulls a baggie from inside the tree, begins to cut lines. Vacation. Shoelace holds up the baggie and wiggles it in front of Kay's face. <laughs> it's a Monday. You can do a little and then go to work. I don't know. When I grow up, I want to be someone. And that means? I don't want to get distracted. We do this all the time. Are you already high? I feel like I don't know anymore. When I grow up, I want to feel safe. Leave me alone. I'm done with this game. Shu. Shu makes a motion with their hand. The image of fingers ramming inside of Kay. What the? Shoelace freezes, stops, realizes. Shu jumps out of the tree and runs away. Fifteen. Lights change. Kay and Sue are playing chess. I used to be good at this. Okay, it takes practice. I can tell you used to be good. Oh, shut up. All right, then. They move the pieces a few times. Shoelace takes one of Kay's pieces. Kay takes one of Shoelace's pieces. Shoelace gently runs their finger down Kay, Kay's arms. Kay stares at Shoelace. You okay? Mm hmm They keep playing, then... Did you know that there's a museum of sick animals? <laughs> like, they all have the flu? No. Like, a bunch of taxiderm animals. Taxidermied? Stuffed? Right. Stuffed animals. But sick. No. Like, different animals sewn together. Weird. Yeah. Do you ever feel like that? Like you're just a bunch of weird pieces, a joke the universe was playing on itself for laughs? I hadn't quite thought about it that way. No. Well. How did you learn about it? It was on TV. I see. Your turn. Shoo, um, just a second. Yeah? I wanted to say something. Okay. Mm, never mind. <laughs> Don't do that. I fucking hate that. I know. Okay, it's just... Oh, it's just... I love you. It's really okay if you're not ready to say it back. It's just... It's been on my mind for a while now, and I wanted to say it because otherwise it feels like I'm constantly going to have to hide what I'm actually thinking, and I don't know if I'm in love with you. I sort of don't think so, but... I know that I care so much for you and I really do love you. That's how I feel. Uh, yeah. um, I'm sorry. I don't think I can say it back. No, that's okay. No, uh, listen, it's, it's, if I say that, 
it means means everything. Like if I say that, that's it forever. Whoa. <laughs> And do you, uh, you see what I'm saying? Then please don't, really. You, you mean a lot to me, too. I think we feel the same way. We're just using different words. I don't want to be together forever. Okay. Same. Okay. Also, I am about to put you in checkmate. Fuck you. <laughs> 23.5. K comes from off toward the tree. She sees the tree and as if something heavy hits her in the stomach, she falls. She is sobbing, sobbing, wailing, maybe so hard that we can't even hear any noise. Maybe she grabs the tree and shakes its branches. Maybe she, sh she, maybe she throws things at the tree, at the ground. Maybe she throws up dry heaves, nothing leaving her body. It hurts, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. It hurts, it hurts, it hurts. Or maybe it's just the wailing and the silent screaming, loss of control mentally and physically. And then lights change. Two. Eight. Turquoise. 103. Green, like forest green, but more like moss, not the leaves, like comfortable, but prickly. 59. Red? Nines are generally pretty red. Maybe a blue red checker. Like a tunnel you fall down. 1001. Pure. Blue on a white plane, like a blue line in a purely white space. 37. Black. Green. Black. A very dark green? Oh, I don't know. This one is jumpy. What does that even mean? I don't know. It's not as strong of a feeling. It's not just a color. It's mostly a feeling associated with a color. Like eights are kind of soft and fake, but also motherly. Suburban moms. Eights are the suburban moms of numbers. The fuck? I don't make the rules. There are no rules. I mean, there are. It's a feeling that I have. That's the rule. 42. Gentle. Lilac. A sorority girl, but she's actually really nice. 59. I told you, red blue, like a checker. You're bullshitting. I am not. This is not synesthesia. You do not have synesthesia. Okay. Okay. If it's not synesthesia, it's something else. It's a feeling. I have a strong feeling about numbers. Sevens are good, twos are basic, and so on and so forth. You. <laughs> You're just jealous because you don't feel so strongly about numbers. I love numbers. But you don't feel them. I can't believe you self-diagnosed yourself with synesthesia. I didn't even say the word synesthesia. I said I have this weird thing where I feel very strongly about numbers. Synesthesia. The label is irrelevant. You do not have a special relationship to numbers. You're just responding to the numbers in the moment, noting the feeling they give you in the moment. If I asked you tomorrow, you wouldn't remember. Or maybe you would tomorrow if you knew I would ask. But the next day or the next? Hmm, I don't think so. You think you know me so well. You look nervous. Leave me alone. Nervous. You're lying. Leave me alone. 
K shoves shoelace. They shove each other around. They end up running around after each other, running circles around the tree. Finally, they're tired. They fall to the ground. I resent the fact that you don't believe me. I resent the fact that you won't admit that you don't have synesthesia. You're annoying. Agree to disagree. Fine. Seventeen. Mm, I look at my body, I think it's just enormous. Just enormous, my thighs. Don't you think they look like two beached whales? No. Maybe hot dogs. I'm not joking. Isn't that how you feel about your body? I feel like I'm not at home in my body. I think that's a different thing. Most days I, I wake up and it's just wrong. The parts are all wrong, wrong, but the other parts wouldn't be right either. There's no way to fix it. That's why you sometimes don't want me to touch you. Yeah. Is it like a feeling of being disgusting? It's not that I don't want you or anyone. It's not that I don't want to be touched. Sometimes it feels like you don't want to touch me. I have a problem with my body. When I look at my body, I can see all the parts I hate growing bigger and bigger. I think your mind is lying to you. Have you been eating? What did you eat today? I ate. It tasted like cardboard. It tasted like cardboard and I swallowed it anyways. Okay, what did you eat? A bagel, a salad, some stir fry, a chocolate croissant, a burrito. I don't believe you. I don't understand you. Do you think we look good together? My head is enormous. I think there's an appeal. How can you find me attractive? Look at this, and this, and this, and this. Oh, I, I don't really get why you don't see it. I like the shape of your face. Mm, I hate the shape of my face. I wish I could be outside of myself. Me too. No, I mean, I, I wish I could see myself from the outside. Oh. I wish I was. I wish it was different. I'm hungry. Should I make you something? No, I just meant, never mind. Sometimes I feel like my skin is on fire. I think your body is perfect, really. I know that sounds corny, but I do. I like all the parts of it. This one and this one. <laughs> How do you feel? Like, generally, right now, the last five minutes. Uh, right now? It's all right right now. Not so much noise in my head. Someone told me once that if you hate your body, you should touch every part really slowly and lovingly. That sounds nice. Can you help me? Shule sits across from Kay and puts the entire palm of their hand on her face. Stop! I was being serious. I thought the point is that you're supposed to do it, not to yourself, you know? I'm adjusting the exercise for the current situation. Take it seriously. Okay, sorry. I'm being serious. 
Shoelace puts their fingers gently on Kay's ear. Kay puts her fingers on Shoelace's eyebrow. I love you. I love you. The lights change. Eighteen. In the dark. You're shaking. You're sweating. You try to sleep. Why can't I touch you? The first four days are, are the hardest. After the synapses in the brain reform. I wish you could touch me. Me too. Smoke another cigarette. I'm only sleeping. The only thing I'm allowed to, to be addicted to anymore. A cigarette lights up in the dark. It shakes. Do you want me to hold it? The cigarette falls. I got it. Really? I don't want to. Feels like there's a tiny drummer hammering inside my head. Techno dungeon. Not quite. Almost. Not really. We should try to sleep. 25.5. Do you remember? Huh? Isn't it strange? I think the weirdest part is the not remembering. I mean, you're so intimate for so long and then, you know what I mean? Maybe it's too weird to bring this up. Well. I remember. No, not really. What are you talking about specifically? Nothing specific, just generally the you and the me in that way. I feel like you're thinking of something specific. Once you told me you felt like my pelvic bone was getting sharper and that's how I knew I'd lost a lot of weight. I mean, we didn't have a scale. I just mean, I can't remember what it was like. I used to know your taste, the way you smelled, touching your body underneath mine, the physical sensation of us. I mean, the specifics fade of everything. But you know what I mean. It was so intense. We were both there together. It must have been or we wouldn't have. I remember liking it. I must have, I remember moments. Sure, me too. The radio station, <laughs> the hotel in Detroit. The park when, where they were playing baseball. On that hill outside of the drive-in? Right, yeah. But I can't remember what it really felt like, really. I can't really remember the tree. I can't access that anymore. So you can't remember. I remember your hands. Eight. Kay sits against the tree, her eyes closed. She is almost falling asleep. Shoelace sits on the ground in front of a large cassette player. They are switching cassettes, playing a song, listening a bit, switching it again. It was great. Really, really great. You think they liked it? Did you see that dance? It was amazing. You did an amazing thing. I don't remember a good 15 minutes, just sweat and bodies, my foot stomping on the ground. Did you know the song? You know, I don't remember the names of things. I felt it. You look tired. I've been dancing for hours. Can I play one more? If you want. Shoelace shuffles through the small pile of cassettes, finds the one they're looking for. This one. They turn on the cassette player again. Dreams by Fleetwood Mac starts playing. Shoelace comes and wraps themselves on top of Kay. Kay starts to hum along. 
I've heard it before. I like this song. He comes along. Stevie Nicks. He likes Stevie Nicks. I wonder where I heard it. It's a breakup song. It doesn't sound like it. It makes me want to dance. K and Shoe Dance. Stevie Nicks wrote it when she broke up with Lindsay Buckingham. This is a remix. Stevie was a girl? Is, yeah. Lindsay's a boy or whatever. Lindsay sounds weirdly masculine. Somehow that makes sense. I guess. It feels sad to me, the song. Something underneath. Trying to be okay with something that's over. They dance. What? You're giving me a look. It's just, you look happy. I am. I am. Surprise! <laughs> they dance some more. The sound of the tree. 23. Lights up on Shoelace and K. They sit awkwardly far away from one another. I'm sorry. Please stop apologizing. I'm... Okay. Fourteen X. Come here. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> stop. Can you take me seriously for just one second? Just take this. Yeah. Take it. Okay. Okay, fine. What is it? Just open it. You... Kay opens the velvet box. Kay sees found objects put together. Things that remind shoe of Kay. A new shoelace, maybe, to tie around her wrist. It's like a portable shrine. I had this whole plan. I, I was going to take you on this treasure hunt, but you don't ever have any time. And I found this Pokemon card with your birth month and an ashtray in the shape of a heart. It's trashy, but also has style, you know? And I thought to myself, if anyone should have a heart-shaped ashtray, then, well, I thought it should be you. Are you okay? Hello? I've never seen you so quiet. Thank you. Most people are idiots anyways. <laughs> 26, five. Why do you always wear that thing around your wrist? You gave it to me. I did? It was on the ground when you were cleaning your room after the first time we, you wanted to put it in the trash. I don't remember that. Well. Nine. Lights change. Kay and Shoelace are sitting in the branches high above. They may or may not be high. I like to call this Space. Like, as in outer? Outer space, yeah. Do you think if I hung upside down for a really long time, all the blood would go to my head and I'd die? That's a really morbid and terrible thought. I was just wondering. Do you? I try not to think of things like that. It's bad mental hygiene. 
thinking about death, ways to die? I guess. I'm not sure death is bad. I guess people seem to think death is bad. I, I try not to think about negative things in general. You're always sad. I'm low grade depressed. There's a difference. Um, wait. What? It just went silent. It's nice. So you think that's what it's like when we die? It just goes silent? Like I said. Hmm. Tell me there's a God. Tell me. Um, well. I need you to promise me there's a God. Um. Just say it. Well, I don't actually believe in God, but I can tell you a story. Okay. When I was a kid, I, I went to this religious school. Um, there was this priest or pastor. <laughs> right, they don't let women be priests. Anyways, she was very kind. I, I felt like when she talked, there was an ocean, something moving underneath, something out there. There has to be. Okay. Maybe. Are you okay? I just feel confused. <laughs> It'll pass. Give it a few minutes. I can tell you another story if you want. Okay. Thirteen slash twenty seven point five. There's maybe a scene where they have sex. I'm not sure what this looks like yet. It should be awkward and gentle and loving and painful and maybe Kay cries, but she doesn't know why. And Shoelace doesn't have to think for one moment and it's just good. Maybe it's not clear what's happening to them or us. It doesn't need to be explicit. And then it's over. Twenty-eight. They come in perhaps from a party. Finally. Full well moon. Surprise. <laughs> Not. Yeah. Sorry, I wasn't able to. It was really busy today. I didn't think you'd have time. I, I just wanted to. Make sure we said goodbye. Could be a while. <laughs> I had this image of us doing some kind of ceremony. Like a ritual. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Do you know? No, I mean, not really. You're kind of the most ritual person I know. I don't do any rituals, not on a regular basis. Isn't that the point of a ritual? <laughs> do you still think you have synesthesia? Shut up. <laughs> or maybe you should ask the numbers, they'll give you a feeling. Oh, funny, really, you're hilarious. <laughs> Sorry. I'm so sorry. You have to go. It'd be nice to extend this, but uh, 
I mean, uh, how much is there to say? Anyways. I think we should sit. They sit cross-legged across from one another. Or maybe they kneel. Kay looks at shoelace. And then we... Motion. I remember. They are still. Slowly, Kay reaches out and touches Shoelace's ear. Shoelace reaches out and places their hand on Kay's cheek. They do this slowly, changing positions of their hands for a few moments of time. Maybe someone cries. At some point, the moment has passed. From now on, if I see you at this party, I'll Pretend I don't know you. Okay. From now on, if I see you, I'll pretend I don't know you. Okay. Shoelace leaves. One last look at the tree. Kay maybe touches the tree. Kay looks up over the tree. End of play. Thank you, bravo. Thank you, everyone. It's been a magnificent, magnificent reading. Thank you for your wonderful work today. Uh, for all audiences here on Zoom and on Facebook, we're gonna start a short conversation with the cast, the director and the playwright. So if you have any questions or comments, uh, please uh, send them to us. You can use the Q&A option if you are here on Zoom and on Facebook, you can use the comment section to let us know what you think. So first, let's welcome uh, the director of today's reading, Ignacio Garcia Bustelo is here with us today. Hi, Ignacio. Hello. 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 Nice. Thank you for being with us. Let's welcome sure. the actors, uh, Alenka Krager. Hi, Alenka. And Megan Ermilio. Megan, mm -hmm. perfect. Uh, let's welcome now the playwright from Berlin, in Germany, we have Paddy Kim Hamilton. Congratulations, Paddy. Thank you for being with us today. So uh, questions, comments, uh, love, anything, send it to us uh, on Facebook and Zoom. I will make sure to, to send it to, to Paddy. Um, Paddy, I have a few questions for you, but uh, first, how are you? How do you feel today? I'm good. I'm good. It's really, like I said earlier, the summer came and it's always, I don't know, it's kind of like the season of festivals. Things are starting. I have a bunch of readings that have happened and are coming up. So it's nice to be able, and it's nice to be able to come back to this play because it's a play I wrote so long ago at this point. It feels like an older play. And it's, yeah, I had a reading of it last summer. So it feels a bit like deja vu just to come back and do it again. Well, we're very happy that you're with us. Um, let me ask you first uh, about the, the origin of, of this play. How did you start it? Even though it was a while ago, like, how did the idea come to you and what's been the journey for this play? Um, well, I, I had, I, with a lot of my plays, I, it often comes as an image. So I had this image of a tree and I had like two children sort of dancing around this tree and it, I couldn't tell what their gender was, and that was that felt important to the sort of image that I had in my mind. It might have been like a, like a, like one of those really vivid dreams that you have, like when you 
when you take a nap or something like this, it happens to me sometimes that I have these dreams that like the images just stick with me. And I think I just, I remember I have this document somewhere, but I wrote, I drew the image I saw and then I wrote a page of like, this is what I'm, what I see. And interestingly enough, like that page was like the start of the play and then it got completely cut. But when I go back and read it, I'm like, oh, the tone of the play is still very much there. So I just started working with these characters, um, getting to know them by writing. And then through that, the amount of scenes just sort of, you know, continued to grow until we had you know, all the scenes that are there now, actually more, so like a, a fair amount have been cut at this point. But yeah, it was a, it was a period uh, like of discovering the, the play itself through the writing process, which was really exciting. Perfect. Um, well, the play presents a lot of challenges in terms of like, um, I want to say challenge, like a lot of like ways of, you know, uh, asking the, the audience and the reader to, to participate, you know, and to be active while reading or while listening. And, and one of them that is very interesting is that the, the temporal aspects, like how it changes, mm -hmm. uh, even the title of each scene, you know, has a different number and you can uh, play with the temporal setting. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Well, when I was writing the play, I thought of it as, as sort of a series of memories on a relationship. And I was thinking about how we remember relationships. And I, I just don't think that we have memory in a linear way. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to write down snippets of this relationship as someone might remember it in the memory, probably of Kay. And if you order them based off the number, which I know that they did in this rehearsal, actually the first time they read it through, they read it through um, linearly. So they took the one to, I think it's 31 or 28. So it's a cycle of the moon, so 28. So they read it in the order, which I thought was really interesting uh, as a directorial choice because I know what the order of the relationship is, but because I wrote it and I've, I've spent so much time with the text, but somebody who doesn't, who hasn't done that would not know and might be confused. And I think a lot of times the feedback I get the first time people read it, they're a little bit confused. And then when they read it a second time, it makes significantly more sense to them because then they sort of have a, a more of an overview of the whole relationship, but it's not an easy text to read just once because you don't quite know what's happening. And I've noticed that this is honestly a lot of my texts because I work with memory and a lot of my different plays. And so it's often that it's sort of these sort of collage dreamlike fragments because that's how I go through the world thinking about my memories and that's what I'm translating onto the page. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, working with, with memory and working in, in particular here with a relationship, it presents a, a level of intimacy that's very strong in, in the play. Is it something that you usually work on on your text, like um, you know, an insight and, and, and you know, a view on intimacy in, in a couple, in, in this case, or in general, like between relationships? Uh, I think that's a really interesting question. It depends, honestly, on the play and the topic of the play. I think uh, one of my very good friends, who's like a dramaturg and also a playwright has said to me once like modern love stories is kind of your, your genre like I always return back to this genre I'm very interested in how we act in intimate settings and how we are in different forms of intimacy so I've written more than one play where intimacy is is addressed and where we're, we're looking like very much into the intricate parts of the of the relationship because I also think there's a lot of parts about being in an intimate relationship that we don't see on stage and we don't see on tv that are not shown like what does it really mean to be intimate with someone and so um, and it's very difficult to write about romantic relationships without it becoming too cliche so I'm also always kind of, sort of trying to navigate this how do we how do we tell a story of a romantic relationship that also is in so many ways so banal like the way that we interact with the people we spend the most time with and are the most intimate are often just us sitting together and not saying anything and so how do you portray that on stage how do you show that kind of a relationship and um, so yes, it's a theme I return to in my work, but it definitely really depends on the work itself because I've also, I'm writing a play right now about old women in a hospital and that play is significantly less intimate because it's these seven women who are strangers in the hospital. So they have different kinds of, uh, of conversations. So I think it, it depends on the world of the play and what the world is asking for. Yeah, but it's, it seems that it's a deep interest on, on like exploring the humanity, you know, the, the, our human soul in terms of like how we relate to each other 
Definitely. Yeah. Relationships, I think, are interesting. And I actually, like, I have a play that has a reading next week, which is about, it's called Sex Play, and it's about consent and intimacy. Like, that is the point of that play, where I'm really examining how do we speak about consent? How do we, how do we use language when we're talking about our most intimate and vulnerable situations? So that play is, like, even more going into the things that are addressed in this in this play that we just read tonight so again it just depends on the play to some degree and on another note uh tell us a bit more about the the, the tree it has like a powerful presence and and also many ways maybe to you know unpack the 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 way that this symbol or like this element plays in the, in the whole text yeah um well the tree has always been there like i said it was like the first image i saw and so i have fought to keep it because i remember i got a feedback from a professor when i was like this is like i was like the first semester in, in my grad school and i remember the professor being like no one's ever going to put the tree on stage so you might as well cut it and i was so upset and i i'm glad that i had that you know sometimes you need to get that feedback to know that that's the wrong feedback because you have such a strong reaction to it that you know like that's not right and so that's how I felt about that for sure, because I felt that the tree in some ways is so much a symbol of them and who they're who they are. And I honestly think that there are versions of this play that could be written more drafts where the play, the tree could play even more of a role. And I thought of a, a version where the tree, for example, might get sick because I feel like as a metaphor for their relationship and as the place where they come back to they're living in, they have this you know, this tree is carrying much more weight than just the tree. It's also the pl their place. And, and I think also to think of like a tree, a single tree in the woods, like if you go and look at a tree, a tree, although there are thousands of them in the woods, you can find one tree and have this absolutely incredibly intense attachment to this one thing. So I feel like it, in many ways, it just really works for the metaphor for them. And yeah. <laughs> Perfect, yeah. Uh, I would like to bring to the conversation Ignacio and just just tell us a bit more about the your your impressions with with this text. So, sorry, say that again. Uh, what are your impressions with this text? Well, when you well, I was really honestly impressed. Like this is I'm not saying this to be nice or to be because we are in front of an audience or because like the playwright is here. This is easily one of the best scripts I've read in the last few years. Like it's the, the poetry that's in it, the characters, the relationships, you know, the everything, like uh, the scenes. I'm very much drawn to these kind of texts that are more poetic than realistic. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, you know, like it, they leave more room for the imagination and for create creativity. Um, it is so rich and so complex and also so deconstructed, you know, that it's hard to, you know, accomplish all those things and, and into a reading. You know, there is a lot of it that goes into putting the play on stage, a full production of it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, it's a journey. I, I feel like <clears throat> we can only it has so much it has so much it just you know like makes you want to keep exploring and exploring the relationships and exploring the characters and exploring the situations and the intimacy and everything you know like it's it, it's an outstanding text really it really is well thank you thank you for for your words and uh, I would like to ask also the cast and see what your impressions are about the text and, the, and your character and how do you uh, relate to, to the text and what, what general impressions. So maybe we can start with Elenka. Okay. Um, hi. Um, yes, I, I was very impressed with the play as well. I think uh, it has so, just like, just by reading the scene, even just once, I thought like, uh, it was so full of life and so full of like very deep personal moments and uh, it was like really leading us to so many places so uh, it was a, a great joy to to work on, on this text. Thank you. Thank you, Alenka. Uh, Megan, what do you think? Oh yeah, um, just reading it 
um, the first time I was like, whoa. <laughs> and then rereading it the second was so enlightening. And then like, just you could keep going and find new things every time you like look at these scenes. And I think that something about it for me, like the play feels just like cast in moonlight, like that kind of blue feeling, I think um, just permeates through the page and just kind of like colors these characters. And um, I just, I, I love to play. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Um, let's let, let me see uh, what impressions we get from from Facebook, from Zoom, Winston. Hi, Guillermo. Um, actually, I'm hearing a lot of people saying that the play, the reading was very intimate, which we talked about already. Mm -hmm. um, there are people sending love. Some of Patty's uh, fellow playwrights, Brian, Luis Miguel, and in fact, Miguel says, "Bravo, Patty! A really exciting play." and very difficult stage. A great job by Alenka, Megan, and Ignacio. Um, and more people sending love. Congratulations. Perfect. Oh, perfect. Um, that's great. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a challenging play in, in, in a way, but it's, it's a beautiful and intimate play as well, too. And I would like to ask a buddy, maybe tell us how was the, the journey uh, for this play in Cimientos that we met different times and and when we got to to you know discuss your your play and uh, how uh, you know um, the process of going back to the text for the meeting that we had and then after uh, for this reading how was that for you? Well, it was really it was a really I mean me getting to Cimientos was a whole thing. I think you wrote me or either you or Winston sent me an email and said, "Hey, you should submit this play." And we had never met, so I was like, "Why am I getting asked to submit?" And I had actually sent the play out to so many theaters and so many people had written back saying, "It's a lovely play, but we can't do it." And I think the main reason for not being able to do it is that it's meant to be played by two children and it's also it's dealing with gendered queerness in a way that is very radical I guess like I didn't think it was radical when I wrote it but that's often the case I write something I don't think is radical and then it gets read for, by other people and they're like it's very experimental and so I think that like, I had just gotten all this feedback it's very poetic it's really lovely we can't do it no thank you and so I had almost given up on this play to some degree or just been like it's a play that's in the drawer and so then I got asked to submit it and I submitted it and I, I was invited and it was amazing and um, and I really, I mean, I said this in the video, I think, uh, that, is show, that was shown on the first day, but I thought it was so incredible to be in this writing group with people from all over the world. And we're all on Zoom. And I mean, Zoom can be such a pain, but you're there and there's people from Uganda and Spain and Russia. And you're showing up not once, but every week for 10 weeks. And everyone is bringing a text and everyone is showing up for each other. And people weren't really missing meetings. Like it was very like a really intentional group. And I, I thought it was really powerful to get feedback. And it was also really nice to hear what people had to say about this play particularly. Um, I felt like I got a lot of really helpful feedback in terms of where I could go um, in future drafts and also just a lot of care and understanding for the play itself. Like what is the play trying to say? And I remember like halfway through, cause I was trying not to say too much and then halfway through everyone's like, are they children? Are they really supposed to be children? And Winston was just so excited about it being children. He's like, I understand the play now. Like it was like people were explaining the play to each other, like from what they had gleaned from their reading. And so that was really exciting because I was just sitting back sort of letting the conversation happen. And then to see other people realize what the play was about. And then Julia wrote me afterwards and said like, I get it now. Like I also didn't understand it. But then what, this, again, this like sort of second read when it was in conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was really nice. It's nice to be in that kind of a community where and or just to be able to be in that situation where you can watch other people's reaction to the play and other people have a discussion about the play because most of the time when you put on a play you know everyone goes home and they're, they're in the car or whatever and they're talking to each other about what they thought about the play but you don't necessarily get to hear their thoughts mm -hmm. in the same way like even if there's a talk back someone's like oh i loved it like they're not going to tell you really you're not going to go through the whole process of their thoughts on the play and so to be in the room for like an hour while people are talking about it and giving you feedback is a very special thing it doesn't happen so often so yeah, yeah. 
Well, you you were uh, fundamental and, and amazing in not only with this play but also helping other other playwrights. And something that is beautiful to see is that when you know you are wo working to make other plays grow, you are also working on your own writing. And I think that as a, as a, as a sort of family that we created like that that show, uh, so I was very happy to see that, and and we're very very proud that you're with us. Please, please. Yeah. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. All right, um, Winston. Hey, you have, no, I just wanted to thank, um, second what you just said, and I wanted to tell Patty that I'm still excited about this play being performed by kids, and I do see that tree in the middle of the stage. Um, uh, but all the best to you, and thank you so much for being part of Samantha this year. You've been absolutely amazing. Congratulations. Thank you, Winston. Thank, thank you. Congratulations to the cast and directors. Thank you all. Yes, thank you for the reading. Thank you for the beautiful reading. Well, thank you, everyone, uh, here on Zoom and on Facebook. Let me thank one more time Ignacio Garcia Bustelo for directing the play and the actors, Alenka Krager and Megan Ermilio. Thank you for your magnificent work today. And finally, thank you, Patty King Hamilton, from, uh, for uh, being with, with us this season. Um, don't be a stranger, keep us updated with your future projects and you know that you have this open for you all at the time. So um, thank you. So for all of our audiences, our next reading is going to be today at uh, 6 p.m. We'll have a bilingual reading in Spanish and English uh, and the play is Revitalized, written by Joel Ulloa, who, who's going to be joining us from Los Angeles, California. Uh, visit www.yatitheater.org to join via Zoom or simply connect to our Facebook page on the date of the reading. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And let me remind you that if you want to support us, you can do so by visiting yatitheater.org slash donate. We are a nonprofit organization, and a donation of any amount will help us tremendously. Thank you, Ignacio, Alenka, Megan, Paddy, and I'll see you all in a few more hours at 6 p.m. Bye. Thank you.